Hi, this is your Professor Judy Paparozzi. And one of the most amazing things about the human trafficking problem in the world has been its epidemic rise. And we've looked as professionals in this field to determine what exactly we're seeing and why is this happening? Well, we know the reasons because we've talked about that before, that there are low startup costs. You can literally get a lower person to human trafficking for nothing. There are high profits. One 12 year old girl can make a quarter of a million dollars uh, per year for, for a trafficker. And it's a crime in plain sight that we just don't see. So if a police car stops a, a, a man driving a car with a 12 year old girl next to him, the policeman's not going to see that there's any problem like he would if he smelled drugs. So it's a crime in plain sight. But this epidemic rise in human trafficking has been greatly facilitated by the use of social media and cell phones in particular. Because where do most 12 to 17 year olds, the target population for human trafficking, how do, we, how do they get the traffickers get a hold of them and the ones who are being lured? Through the cell phone. So in, the vi in this short video that is going to explain to you what we're going to be talking about, in my, the article that I wrote for UNC Pembroke, for specifically for my dean, uh, we're going to read that article, we're going to review a PowerPoint, and then we're going to discuss it on the discussion board. But inside the article are also some great videos to show you a trafficker speaking and a young high school victim talking. So I have a couple of different things, and I really would like you to tell me whether or not this article should be published in newspapers around the country, not for me, but for the parents out there. And what you as parents, those of you who are parents, or those of you who have nieces and nephews, what you're going to do with this information. So rather than quiz you on it, I want to know what you're going to do about this, whether you think we should get this message out, because I haven't really read this message anywhere as concisely as I've put in this article. So just to give you a little bit of an overview, do any of you know the age that a child first gets a cell phone, an average age in this country? Well, I can't chat with you through this video, but it's the age of six. And by the time a girl or boy gets to be 12 to 17 years old, about 67% of them have a cell phone. And what a lot of people don't know, and we're going to learn about by reading the article and reviewing the PowerPoint for this lesson, what a lot of people don't know about is all of those cell phone apps that we download, or all of these social media applications that we have on our computers, so either on our phones or on our computers, all of them that I know of, when you download them, download them, it defaults to public. So if you go on Facebook and put it on your phone or put it on your computer, Facebook sets it up so that the whole world, including all the criminals in the world, can see your Facebook page. So if you're posting your birthday, if you're putting pr uh, problems with your boyfriend or girlfriend on Facebook and you haven't changed your privacy settings, the whole world knows your problems, okay? The whole world knows your birth date. So not only can it lead to identity theft, it can lead right to human trafficking. So this article is going to cover that. And there are also some really important terms that you're going to hear in this, read in this article and see in the PowerPoint. One of them is burner phones. Most of us don't have burner phones, but burner phones are what traffickers use in order to make sure that no one can trace uh, the connection between the person that they are texting, to he or she is texting, and um, the trafficker. And we've Congress has tried three or four times to pass burner cell phone legislation to make all burner cell phones uh, users provide identification. But the traffickers have an advantage here that we don't have. We know, we don't know who the trafficker is and we can't trace him, but he knows who you are and that's the scary part. We're also going to hear about massive multiplayer online role-playing games. They're called MMORPGs and they're like Discord and World of Warcraft or whatever. Our kids are playing with hundreds of thousands of people out there in cyberspace and it's anonymous and a person can create a profile as if he's 12 years old, but he's a 45 year old pornographer, child trafficker, rapist, etc. And your kid or your niece or nephew may be playing with that person. We'll also learn about self deleting or self destructive apps. Do you know that Periscope has it set up so that if 
your child or your niece or nephew or you is talking to somebody on Periscope, within seconds the app deletes and there's no history of it whatsoever. So how can a parent check a child's phone if the app has been deleted and the kids are doing that on purpose? Also, another term that we're going to be hearing is online footprinting. And an online footprint, traffickers have made it, they're so involved in encryption software and whatever gets developed that we can't trace what happens. So if a child disappears, unless there's some trace online where we can figure out what happened, the, uh, the traffickers um, will have the advantage. And what happens is a lot of kids go online and they post, oh, I'm not that pretty, I've got acne or whatever. And the trafficker looks for an online footprint that kind of says, this is the perfect victim, she's insecure, she'll be lured by flattery, and I, I'll, you know, I'll do you know, horrible things to her, but I'll film them. And I mean, so the trafficking already begins by just reading someone's online footprint, and an online footprint is created as we post on social media, as we post on cell phone apps, etc. And they learn about us. Now, a lot of people don't know about geotagging and geotracking. Basically, inside of every cell phone, when you take a picture and you post it on any form of social media, that can be tracked and tagged. Uh, the tag inside of the, the thing gives metadata. And basically what metadata is, it's, it's a description of where that person is. So if somebody tags on, uh, puts a photo, and someone has the software to read that tag, can track that person if she's in a mall, that trafficker can be right down at that mall and targeting a 12-year-old girl. So we're going to learn about geotracking or ge uh, geotagging and geotracking. So there's a couple of videos inside about the traffickers. I would really appreciate it if you watch it. So we're really going to learn about how ubiquitous or how uh, common it is everywhere to have cell phone usage all over the world, but specifically in America. And then we're going to learn about how all this social media and cell phone apps have really impacted the rise, the meteoric and epidemic rise of human trafficking. And then I want you to go on the discussion, read my, uh, my prompt, and let's have a great conversation about the impact of social media and cell phone apps on the epidemic rise of human trafficking. Thank you.